the Schwinn Ascension mountain bike. It's a new one from Schwinn and it's sold in store only at Target, but my local Target, it hasn't had this bike. But with some diligence and luck, I was able to get my hands on one. And I have been looking forward to this, and so many people have been asking about it. And this video is going to be my day one impression with the Ascension. That's where I unbox, or in this case, untag, and then ride as is. Just see how things work out. And then later, I come back and revisit the bike and see if more experience changes my initial opinions. And I'll start off on this bike with the hang tag and look at the features Target wants us to know. There's info on the aluminum frame, the 1x7 drivetrain, the disc brakes, 29 inch wheels, and even the weights listed 38 pounds, which is a bit heavy, but I like they put that info on the hang card. As far as hang cards go, very informative, though curiously it omits two of the key features for the Ascension, at least the ones that caught my eye. But we'll get to those. For now, let's get into how this bike is equipped. For starters, 720mm handlebars on the 70mm stem in these bars, 31.8mm diameter, nice and mountain bikey. Grips, they're not lock-ons, but slip-on rubber with dual Schwinn branding, and they have almost finger grooves around them. It's hard to see on camera, but it's there. We'll see the mechanical disc brakes soon, but they're controlled via these alloy levers, and tucked under the right lever, the ProRes 7-speed trigger shifter, and if you're new here, a trigger shifter means that there are levers down low you can control with your thumb and your finger. Regular viewers of this channel will know that Schwinn last year released tapered head tubes on a few bikes, and this is the first taper that I've seen at Target. And this opens up lots of options for people like me that like to upgrade our bikes because there are lots of good tapered forks. This fork, though, is not one of those. It's a suspension fork, so there's that, but there's no preload adjustments or any adjustment of any kind. And the travel, it's limited. The target site doesn't say anything, but I measured it 60 millimeter, which is surprising considering some of the other stuff that you're going to see on this bike. The branding on the side, they did add something, though, below the Schwinn 29. Schwinn fans will know these wheels from the hubs to the alloy double wall rims. These are big 29er wheels, the most popular size, and the tires, 29 by 2.30. They're knobbies, but more hybrid knobbies. More for light trail, but also street friendly. This saddle is a new one for me when it comes to Schwinn products, but seats, they're a fickle thing from rider to rider, so all I'm going to say about this early on is that it looks more budget. The seat post, a 31.6mm diameter with a quick release clamp. Polymer pedals kick off the drivetrain, and those are mated to 170mm alloy crank arms, and the one by up front, a 30-tooth single chainring. There is a subtle variation with this versus the 1x7 Pro Wheel setups that I'm used to seeing. Here though, the Pro Wheel derailleur. Introduced last year by Schwinn, these are decent for budget parts and it packs a clutch. And if you don't know what a clutch is, in layman's terms, it increases tension which reduces movement, which can be a problem on rough terrain. Going with the Pro Wheel derailleur, the Pro Wheel 7 speed freewheel. The benefit of this freewheel, the range. 14 to 38 tooth. These are a big deal because they actually make 1x7 big box drivetrains usable, or more usable, on a mountain bike trail. Now let's talk the frame, an area where the Ascension has garnered a lot of attention because on top of having a tapered head tube, this has a nice frame. And at first I thought it was a rebadge of another Schwinn frame, but I was wrong. This is unique because the standout feature is that it has internal cable routing, something I've never seen on an off the rack big box bike. But there's even more, because in addition to the nice graphics and the internal cable routing, provisions to accommodate a dropper post. Those two things alone make this kind of a big deal. On top of all that, the finish. Now at first, I didn't like the top tube graphic, but in person, it's nice, and it has kind of a lava-like fire appearance. There are hidden elements, like a pixelated 80s mountain range dotted in, and the down tube graphics, the blocky Schwinn text on top of a graphite finish, it reminds me of a Trek mountain bike I saw about a year ago. This is a well done frame, and very much its own design for the Ascension. Earlier I showed the brake levers, here are the actual brakes with the 160mm rotors, both the front and the rear wheels have them, below the rear caliper the factory kickstand, easily removable. So this isn't a rebadge, well good, but what about the geometry? Well I have all the info. Starting with the head tube angle, which is a cross country friendly 69 degrees, 72 degrees for the seat tube angle, the millimeter stuff, Fork offset 51 millimeters, top tube length 635, the seat tube, the head tube, and the chainstay lengths 470, 130, and 430 millimeters. Bottom bracket drop 56, and we've already seen the 70 millimeter stem and the 720 millimeter handlebars. 
So decent specs for a cross-country mountain bike, but there is one other unique thing about this frame, and that's considering that it's a big box 29er, which are usually one size fits all frames, which is commonly 19 inch, but for the Ascension 18.5. This is gonna make the standover more comfortable for people in the 5.9 to 5.10 range. People like me on my day one impression ride, and right away, I can tell this is a smaller frame. It's only half an inch, but it's noticeable. Puts me more in my comfort zone. And that's important when I'm on a bike like this, with limited travel for the fork and a little bit of flex, which means that it's only really suited for smooth, hard packed trails. That's why I'm not pushing it hard. But let me restate, that's because of the fork, not the rest of the bike. Because the frame, the bars, brakes, all the other components, well within my seat of the pants test meter scale of acceptability. I attribute that to the geometry that we looked at earlier because it makes this bike somewhat forgiving to control, which is a good thing for entry-level mountain bike riders trying to hit the trail for the first time. Another thing that will help entry-level riders, the 30-tooth to 38-tooth granny gear combo, because it makes it easier than I would normally expect for a 38-pound bike. It's definitely usable. I can climb even moderately steep hills while seated. I'll come back to the gearing in just a second to discuss high gear, but first I need to talk about shifting. Because to climb through all the gears you have to shift, and the Pro R7 speed, I'm very familiar with this setup and very much okay with it. Now I'm not saying it's perfect because it does randomly get clunky. Sometimes it'll be buttery smooth, sometimes a little clunky in the same gear, but it does shift and shift reliably. And at the highest ratio, the 30 tooth to 14 tooth, this doesn't equate to a super fast ride, but it's more than enough, or more than enough that I'd be comfortable with with this big box fork. Or at least the one that's on the Ascension, but it's still enough to have fun. Noise wise, how does that clutch work well here's a back-to-back -back. first no clutch very noisy lots of chain slapping the chain stay and now clutch on not totally quiet but definitely different and clutch or no clutch the internal cable routing probably helps a little too Another important part of the ride with this bike, on top of being agile, it's easy to dart around, but it doesn't have that big box 29er driving a Mack truck feel. I think given a better fork, this could probably do more, but as it is, for an entry level smooth pack trail bike, it works fine. Plus, thanks to the big wheels, it rolls over a lot. It's even more useful transitioning from trails to paved surfaces where the fork limitations disappear and the gearing can handle any city hill. I haven't even mentioned the disc brakes. The mechanical disc brakes, they worked well out of the gate, no adjustment needed. Let me wrap this up with my day one impression summary and start with the core components because they're what I look for from bars to drivetrain. All impressive considering the big box pricing, which I'll get to, and thanks to the Pro Rush, we finally have 1x7s with a usable range. Remember, it wasn't long ago we were trying 1x7s with a 14 to 28 tooth freewheel. And how about two years ago when a 29er big box bike meant I had to check geometry to see if my toes rubbed the front tire? And now we're rocking tapered head tubes, internal cable routing, and graphics that actually look good. And work, and now have dropper post provisions for under $370. $369.99 actually, but at that price, I become more critical for things like the saddle, which feels about like it looks. Not great, definitely not the worst I've ridden, but not great. The big wheels, they make for popular bikes, but with this fork, limited travel, and the lateral flex, it's just not that good. At least for anything other than light trail riding, around town it's fine. And these crank arms, it's hard to see on camera, but they just don't look as refined. And also, at this price, an argument could be made that a quick release for the rear wheel would be justified. As a whole though, in my opinion, this is definitely enough, especially considering the one by drivetrain, the frame with internal cable routing and that 18.5 inch sizing. This appeals to upgraders like me, so it's definitely a bike that I would consider while shopping. So if you're in Target, maybe roll over to the bike rack and give it a look. But right now, comment below with what you think. Is this what you expected? I know a lot of you have been waiting on this. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you have that notification bell active. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.